Now here's the thing, this is an albacore and this is the first albacore we've ever had in for destruction. Let me tell you a bit about albacores. Back in 1954 when these things were first uh, designed by Upper Fox, the very first one was made not far from here actually over in Langston and it was at Lock Sailing Club that the guys designed and developed this thing and um, there's now over 8,000 of these albacores around the world. Most of them now all live in Canada. So if there's anybody watching this from Canada, how you doing? Let's have a look at this one. This one is obviously a wooden one and this was the most popular design of all of them. And it was made by real true craftsmen. Um, in fact, there was a local builder around here that used to make coffins. And when he wasn't making coffins, he'd actually make albacores. And if you look closely, I know she's getting old now. This one's probably 50 years old but the workmanship on these boats was truly outstanding. It's almost a shame to go sailing in them because they're so pretty. Um, I used to sail one with my mate Dave when I was 15. He was a lot older than me because he could afford to buy one of these things. And I think in the day when he had his built and he had it built from new and he used it from new and I was the first crew member he ever had. It cost him about 7,000 quid and that was back in 1980. So we're looking at over, well, 50 years ago nearly. So 40, summit 40 odd years ago, sorry. So they're an expensive boat in their day and they remain an expensive boat. But this one, as you can see, is probably past its sell by date. And this was probably one of our nemesis. So if Dave, if you're watching, I'm going to chop this up, especially for you. Let's have a look around though. Uh, we've still got the mast in the boat. I've cut the mast up because we had to transport it, but um, it's beautifully made. Um, you, you can't see the way it's made underneath. I'll turn it over once we've cut it a bit. Uh, but th this is a cold mode process. So you have a lovely mold that you lay out and then you'd, you'd stretch and bend your woods over that, clamp it in place while it was still hot, wait for that to cool. And then the hull would have been formed. And from that point, you flip it over and fit the insides out. Now I do simplify it. These things are not made overnight. This would probably take a skilled boat builder a good month to make, um, working hard. And that's why they were expensive. Um, it is a shame to cut it, but it is beyond economical repair, quite frankly. Um, it won't be my pleasure to cut it up, although I'm being a bit flippant about it. It is a shame, but it's got to go. These boats come with beautiful centerboards normally, need to be laminated and the rest of it. So I've undone the bolt. I've tried to pull it out by hand, but it's not having any of it because of this thwart here. So I'll just cut the thwart and that should then allow me to pull it out. flatly refusing to come out. I'll have to adjust some more of the woodwork. It's got to come out now. Look at that, that is as light as a feather. If that weighs three kilos, I'd be surprised. Now this one isn't as, as beautiful as I would have expected. I know the Dave's one, I know I keep referring to Dave, but Dave's one would have been nicer than that. But it's still pretty good. Lovely bit of beach there, I think. And, and still beautifully made. Let me pass that to the cameraman. I'll carry on. I'm just going to cut this boat into three to be honest with you, it's probably easiest. We can then crush it up much more easily. So here we go, it's a great shame, but it's got to be done.
you know, it genuinely gives me no pleasure to cut an albacore. I, I reckon I spent three years on one of these. And although we were never particularly good at it, we did not have a nice time. Humanly a sad day. Anyway, it's got to go. Now, I suppose less of the histrionics about how sad I am about cutting this up, but the harsh reality is this is a 15 foot dinghy. It's been sat in this guy's garden for as long as he's had it, which probably 40 years. He hasn't used it clearly in the last 20 at least, and it's taking up space and you know, what can you do? Okay, you can keep painting it and hope for the best, but it's just getting old. It's just old and tired and beyond its useful, useful life and frankly, probably not safe to sail anymore because of its, its neglect. Um, yet another boat that we will be cutting up and are cutting up for somebody, um, at least it gives them space back in their garden and they can enjoy their garden for what it's for and not for storing manky old boats. So this boat sail number, let's have a look. This is 1803. So bear in mind there was 8,000, maybe 8,500 that are still, well that's the number we're up to. So this is a fairly early boat. If you go back to 1956 when it was first built, or these were first developed, this was probably made in the 80s. Uh, sorry, the mid 70s. So she's had a good day, she's had a good life. But this is the end of her. Anyway, look, keep watching what we're up to. We try to do this as nicely and easy as we can. We try not to upset too many people, but this is clearly beyond economical repair and she had to go. Thanks for watching and do subscribe. <laughs>